Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the time to be able to come and worship you and to experience you and to praise you for what you have done and accomplished all these many years. God, a hundred years ago, you saw fit to plant a church right here on this corner. And Lord, you've used this church in an amazing way over the years to minister to people, to minister to families, to minister to this community. And we pray, God, that you would continue to do that. Lord, let us get out of your way, that we would be completely open and willing to do whatever it is you ask us to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together. I want you to know I've already gotten emotional during sound check, so I'm sorry. It'll probably happen. Uh, if I just can't sing, you just keep on singing. Um, I'm kind of nostalgic anyway. Uh, September will be six years that I've been the worship leader at this church, and I've been honored to do that for every single Sunday that I've been here. And uh, the first time I led this song here was 2013, which was the year I came. So um, still moves me like it does when I was a kid because it's a hymn.
2015. Sweet Jesus Christ, my sanity. Sweet Jesus Christ, my clarity.
us to be faithful, Oakdale, to the very end. New church, old church, doesn't matter. God, we are the church. Use us all the way to the end of our days to love our neighbor as ourselves and to share the gospel wherever we may be, that we will be the light and that we will be the love and that people will know we are Christians, or disciples rather, by our love. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise on and day. Ten thousand years and then forever more.
All right, why don't y'all take a seat? We're going to have sound issues in the new church, too. <laughs> we just are. Sorry about that. I thought you had it muted. It's muted. Oh, well. I'm not going to let it. What, what are you? What, what? Down here at the drag box? Okay. I'll just try not to move. Um, this is probably, oh. I'll just try not to move, guys. And if it goes away, it's not going to matter. Yeah, I'll press the cord, I think. I think that direct box ran out of Holy Spirit. <laughs> is it hot in here or is it just me? <laughs> um, we did this song in 2017. And this was one of my favorite songs that we ever did in this building because, um, can I just be honest with you guys, when I came in 2013, you stared at me a lot. <laughs> and you really looked at me like, what is she doing and when is she gonna be done? I'm uncomfortable, this is awkward. And then, and then you, see I have the best seat in the house, I get to watch your faces. Then little by little, week by week, your faces started enjoying God. And that's what worship is. Just enjoying God through the gift of music. And I watched you do it. I watched you no matter what kind of song it was. And so um, this was one of those songs where I had a moment where I saw some people even raising their hands. I saw some people closing their eyes. And I watched you as a church um, submit yourself through this song to God. So um, we're going to do that now before Justin comes. I lean not on my own understanding My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven I lean not on my own understanding My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven Again, I lean not on my own Standing, my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding, my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God. Trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I lean, and I lean not on my own understanding. My life is yours. My There's 
nothing I hold on to. Tell him, I lean not on my own understanding. Cause my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all. I give. Father, we sing that to you. God, we understand that we're singing about faith and about trust. And every time we sing this song, God, it occurs to me, how do you climb a mountain with your hands wide open? You got to have something to hold on to, right? You got to you got to know which hand to place where and which foot to place where. And, and God, this song reminds us we're not going to do it on our own. We open our hands and we trust you and you provide in ways that we could never do. May we lean not into our own understanding, God. May we trust in you and know that you're going to make something beautiful, not just in us, but through us. For us. God, we lean hard into you today. As we close one chapter and begin anew, how privileged are we, God, to be in this place with you, with one another today? Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Well, if you are, if you're here uh, for the first time, if you walked in off the street today, man, you have come into the craziest service, I promise you. Uh, not a normal day for us, not a normal service, and, and so just a lot of things that are taking place and a lot of things that are happening. And uh, I, you know, listen, we get used to, change is hard, right? We get used to doing things the same way over and over again. I, I want to encourage you just to sort of sit back this morning and take a deep breath and just enjoy what God is doing and what he has done and what he's going to do. And uh, just enjoy this time together. I, I want to mention something to you real quickly and then uh, have a presentation to make. And here at the front, uh, we have some Baptist hymnals. And they say, Witcher Baptist Church. And uh, when we came, uh, when Christine and I and my family came in 2005, of course, our church was still Witcher Baptist Church, and these were the hymnals that we used every Sunday. 
Uh, they, the, uh, money was raised to purchase these hymnals, and, and they, a lot of them are dedicated on the inside. You'll find the name of a, a family. This is uh, uh, Kenneth and Opal Beard, which uh, some of you guys would, would remember that name. And I just want to say this to you. Uh, if, if one of these hymnals would be special to you and would have a special place in your home, uh, we want you to come and take one this morning at the end of the service. They're here again, as I said, at the front. And uh, if you would like one, we'd like for you to, to have one. And, and if you'd like to take a few, you're welcome to do that as well. But we want you to know that that's available to you. Secondly, it really wouldn't be a Sunday at, uh, at Oakdale unless somebody joined the church. Amen? Amen? I mean, we just wouldn't feel like the day was complete unless somebody said, you know, this is not where I thought that I would ever go to church. I drove by that church, you know, for years before I, you know, ever came in. And, uh, you know, spent some time there understanding what the church was all about and what God was doing and came to a place where I realized this is where I'm supposed to be. And so uh, I, because of the way the service is going to work this morning, I want to present someone to you this morning, uh, Shirley McBee. Will you come and stand with me? And I'm going to invite her family to come, the McBee family. Uh, Shirley McBee, this is Marty's mom. Come and stand with me right here. And uh, Shirley is kind of a new member of our community. Um, she's been around our church and obviously around our family for a long time, but uh, recently moved into the Oakdale community. Uh, this past spring, she was part of the, my pastor's class for new and non-members, and we had a great time getting to know her and getting to know one another. And uh, through that class, you know, we learned about what it means to be a church member, didn't we? And, uh, and about what it is and what it isn't. And uh, Shirley comes to you this morning understanding that uh, being a church member means that we are committing our heart and our life in this place. We're opening ourselves up to how God wants to be at work in our family. That we are going to give and serve and love in this place. We're going to sacrifice here. And then we're going to allow others to give and to love and to serve and to sacrifice for us as well. And we all become a part of God's family in this place. And so, Shirley, is that a commitment that you're ready to make this morning as far as Oakdale Baptist Church is concerned? Yes, it is. Shirley was, uh, she has a trump card on most of you. She was baptized in the Jordan River a <laughs> couple of months ago. You'll never be that good, okay? <laughs> and so, Shirley comes this morning making a commitment to this church, making a covenant with God. And, church, we ask the exact same commitment from you. You've been here for a while. You've done this many, many times. Church, are you willing to accept Shirley and to love her, to sacrifice for her, to serve her, and to allow her to grow in this place as a part of this church? If you do, will you say amen? Amen. 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 And we celebrate that decision. We celebrate that commitment. And here's what we're going to do. At the end of the service, when we're all done, I'm going to have uh, Shirley come and, and step back up here with us and give you guys a chance to come by and welcome her as the newest member of Oakdale Baptist Church. How about we say thank you to God. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can be seated. Thank you for doing that. What a, just what a, a, a beautiful morning of, of worship this morning. And, and uh, as I said, we, we finish one chapter of our history here. And we begin a new chapter in the life of our church. And, and again, for those of you who are new to Oakdale, uh, again, if you're visiting for the first time today, let me be sure, and, and I want you to understand the context of what is taking place today in, in, in today's worship service. Oakdale Baptist Church, formerly Witcher Baptist Church, was founded nearly 100 years ago here in the Oakdale community. But we have just completed the first of a three-phase building project on a brand new campus, a half mile down the road, as we were talking about this morning, where we're going to have our first worship service next Sunday morning. A few months ago, we came to an agreement with another church here in our community, the Church of Christ at Oakdale, to sell this facility to them, which means that today is our last worship service together here in this place as Witcher, as Oakdale Baptist Church. Now, our goal is to accomplish two things, and because I'm the pastor, 
I get to determine what those two things are, all right? <laughs> Number one, we want to celebrate and we want to give thanks to God for all that he has done in this place over all these years. Amen? And as I look around and I see new faces and, and so excited to have you as a part of what God is doing here. But I look around and I see some of the faces that were here when, when I first came and faces who have come in the years since. And man, I think about all of the, the great memories and the great times of worship that we've had here. And I just think of how blessed we have truly been. How blessed God has made us here at Oakdale. We want to celebrate that this morning. And then secondly, as we hand the baton of this campus off to the Oakdale Church of Christ, we want to ask God to bless their future in this place. Now, to do those two things, I want to give you just a little bit of history this morning. And then we're going to hear from a couple of special people who I've asked to share some of their memories and, and experiences. And then we're going to finish with a time of prayer where we're going to give thanks and we're going to ask for God's blessing. Witcher Baptist Church was founded in 1920 by two families. Uh, actually, one was Baptist and one was Methodist, but they got together and they decided that this little community was growing to the point where they needed a church. And the, the closest church, the closest Baptist church at least, was Britain Baptist Church. And that was a long way to, to get to at that time uh, in, in this place. And so they decided to come together and to form a church. One of those families' name was Witcher, which answers one of the most asked questions that I get and have always gotten since I've been the pastor here, why is the church named Witcher Baptist Church? And it's very simple. There was a family named Witcher. The community was named Witcher after that family. And the church became Witcher Baptist Church. And so those two families joined together in 1920 and formed this church. The church originally met in the Witcher family home. But in 1926, they had begun to grow and people had become a part and so they were ready to build their own church house. The land here at the corner of, of Hefner and Sooner, although not named Hefner and Sooner at that time, was acquired. And that summer, church members, and this is the story as I understand it, uh, they were given some land where basically where Frontier City is. They planted and harvested a cotton crop all summer long. And from that crop, which they sold, they collected $5,200 to build that very first building, which stood as the only building here for almost 50 years. Now, in comparison to that, I was sharing with Brian Thompson, one of our finance committee members yesterday, that we will spend somewhere around $5.2 million on our new property, so only about 1,000 times more. He asked me, is it 1,000 times bigger? No. But just think about how much has changed in 99 years. Now, there are very few people left here at Oakdale that are connected to that first generation of Witcher members. But we do actually have one, at least one, Emma Heil, or I'm sorry, Emma Tippett, I apologize. Although Emma Heil is connected as well. Uh, Emma Tippett, probably best known as one of our Wednesday night kitchen ladies. If you've ever been to a Wednesday night meal She's probably served you dinner at some point. Emma is related to one of the original members of the church. Now, I asked Emma to speak this morning, but unfortunately for us, fortunately for her, she is a world traveler, and she is at this very moment on her way to Rome and a European vacation, which I think would be a great reality series if you know Emma at all, okay? <laughs> So she's not here with us today and, and wasn't able to, to speak, but she did write me an email, and uh, I asked if I could share some of that email with you, and here's what she said, and uh, let's just tell you this. First, she said, uh, she said, I, I lay awake all night, and I thought about what would I say if I could stand in front of those people, and here's part of what she said. She said, I may not physically be here for the last Sunday, but believe me when I say my heart is there. 
And I want you to think for just a second about how hard it must be for someone like Emma, who has been around this church for so long and has so many special memories in this place. Think about it. You can imagine that it might be very easy for her or someone like her to become, to be bitter about the fact that the church building has been sold, that we are moving away from our original spot, starting something new. Can you appreciate how somebody might feel in that situation? But listen to what she has to say about her memories here. She said, over many, many years, I have seen so many things take place in the church, around the church, from weddings and funerals to fires and tornadoes. Far more important than any part of the building is the people. She said, it's the people of Witcher and Oakdale that have meant more to me than any building could ever mean. I truly believe that it's their love for Jesus and their love for me over all these years who have made me the person I am today. I pray that as we go forward into the next phase of our church life, we all will continue to have our love for Jesus and our love for each other. And I don't think it can be said any better than that. Amen? Thank you, Emma, for sharing that, even though she's far away from us this morning. By 1975, the church had experienced some growth and they completed a new education building that included classrooms and a fellowship hall and a small kitchen. Now, Christy Klein uh, moved with her family, the Hale family, here to this community and Christy grew up at Witcher Baptist during this time frame. So I've asked Christy if she would come this morning and share a little bit about her experiences here. You guys welcome Christy Klein. Good morning. I have to start with a little disclosure because when Justin texted me, he um, asked me if I would um, talk for about four to five minutes on my fondest memories growing up here. And I thought he said 45. So I hope y'all are comfortable because I have a lot to say. <laughs> so anyhow, good morning. Um, yes, my journey started here in 1969 when I was seven years old, my sweet next door neighbor, Dorothy, four year little, invited myself and my siblings to church. We lived next door, we had a white fence between us, we would crawl over our fence every Sunday morning, come to church. And eventually they cut a gate so that they wouldn't have to see us girls crawling over in our dresses. But <laughs> So our journey started here 50 years ago, and this is where my Christian walk started. I was saved and baptized at the age of 10. My siblings were baptized here, and my dad was baptized here. And then, as time went on, I was married, and my boys were baptized here, and one of my daughter-in-law. So we have a long journey here. And um, as I reflect back, I think the most important thing to me, and it has been said already, is the love love for people, the love for the church, the love for the community, and the love for God. And um, the most important thing is that whether it's Witcher or whether it's Oakdale, we've invested in the lives of our children. And so as a child growing up here, I attended vacation Bible school, which was a lot different back then. We had a whole lot of Jesus and a whole lot of Kool-Aid and a whole lot of cookies. Now, our snack ladies have dinners for these kids. But we had vacation Bible school. We had um, RAs and GAs. We, this is where I learned the Bible. We had the Bible drills. I don't know how many remember Bible drills, but you would get up and you'd stand in a line, you'd hold your Bible and you'd challenge and go and you'd find your um, scripture, you'd learn um, the books of the Bible. And so, over the years, we had... Um, sports. We had team basketball. We had softball. And actually, um, I was a pretty good athlete. Um, I only injured two people. Um, I blacked one eye playing the softball, throwing the ball. It was a good throw, but she just missed it. And then I had um, 
some gentleman playing shortstop, and I was playing second base, and he was trying to be a hero. Instead of just tossing me the ball to tag the person out, he ran over and um, actually um, crushed his hand trying to get, tag the person out and has broke his hand in multiple places, had to have pins and everything. And so years later, I got even with him and I married him. So <laughs> he should have uh, passed me the ball and I would have tagged the person out. But, um, but just over the years, I've seen how um, we've invested in the lives of our kids. And so still today, I went to Falls Creek as a child. We still have Falls Creek. And so everything over the years has focused around God and family. And I know that we'll be able to carry on that to our new church. And I know that my dad is smiling down on us today um, because this is, was very important to him to see this new church, and he prayed for it for a long time. And so I know that he will be smiling down on us today. Who knew, who knew Christy was such a comedian? I had no idea. <laughs> well, in 2002, the building that we're worshiping in today was constructed. And let me tell you something. I, this building, I think, represents a much bigger leap of faith than probably what the average Oakdale person really understands and appreciates. I asked Steve Boone, who is one of our deacons. He was part of the building committee that constructed this building. I asked Steve if he would come and share a little bit about that. Let's welcome Steve Boone. Thank you, Justin. Christy Klein and Emma Tippett. What a pair to follow. <laughs> My family and I have been going to church here for about 25 years. About 15 years ago, the church decided to undertake a building project whereby we had built a new sanctuary, freeing up space in our old building, which you saw the picture of in 75. Uh, for improving our Sunday school programs, our fellowship space, and our children and youth programs. We also needed uh, physical improvements, like uh, reliable air conditioning, uh, a problem-free video system, which maybe we got, maybe we didn't, <laughs> uh, a paved parking lot that uh, surprisingly was one of, the, one of the favorites amongst the women, uh, and we needed additional parking in general. Half of the now existing fellowship hall was used as classrooms, and a tiny kitchen was stuffed back in the corner that provided limited food service. Our youth group met in the uh, abandoned and unsafe par parsonage, which was lo located uh, right here where the current sanctuary was eventually built. With an average Sunday worship service attendance of less than 100 and an annual budget just topping $100,000, we moved ahead uh, with great faith in God's provision and a goal of providing these very practical things for our members and approved a building budget of $500,000. With God's help over the next year or two, we were able to add all these practical additions to our church. Uh, thanks to the insurance proceeds from a mid-project tornado, we were able to even remodel the old building in a way that we originally had not thought we'd be able to do. All of this was very significant to our attendees and members. We were physically comfortable. Uh, we could be proud of our new and improved facilities, and we had enjoyed many of God's blessings along the way. But somehow it opened the door to more than that, something more significant than that. It opened the door to new opportunities, to change, to growth, it brought a new pastor, a new name for our church, a new style of worship. We went from, this is the truth, and the sign on the corner said so, the little country church with a big country heart uh, that wanted to limit its membership numbers to a church that now believed that with God's help, there were no limits to what we could do with our church. Also, it brought in new members from the rapidly growing community members that loved their new church and wanted to invite uh, their neighbors to come visit. New families in the neighborhood soon became new members of our church. Oakdale Baptist Church became the kind of church where God was obviously at work. So many good things were happening, 
that you were proud to be attended here and anxious to invite your friends. Youth and children had always been and, and even became more so our top priorities and those groups grew. A small group of believers with very limited resources engaged God's guidance and was able to make a significant impact on the kingdom in our community. What started with our faith in God financially and in his guidance to build a new sanctuary ultimately grew larger and allowed us to release our faith in God for him to do anything. The building itself was great, but it was a small part of the significant increased presence of the Spirit of God in our church, in our community, and in our individual lives. In 2011, we purchased 18 acres just down the road, began fundraising efforts, and uh, our building project began. This project, again, is going to culminate in our first worship service next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, and, and a lot of dreams wrapped up in that Sunday morning. You know, a lot of uh, years and a lot of sacrifice that will all kind of come together on Sunday morning. Here's the question I would ask you. Would anybody disagree that we as a church have so much to be thankful for? We have been blessed in so many different ways. And I think it's incredibly important that we take the opportunity to tell God how we feel about that. I don't think it's good enough to just say, thank you, God. I don't think it's good enough to just say, we're blessed. I think we need to name it and celebrate all the ways that he has blessed us. And so we're going to take some time right now and we're going to do that. I'm going to ask Jamie and our praise team to come. I want to ask you, if you would, to bow your heads and if you would allow me. I want to voice a prayer of thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, I stand before these people and I stand before you. I celebrate you, God, and I celebrate all that you have done in this place. And it goes far, far beyond any person that is here this morning. God, it goes way, way back. It goes back to the beginning when a couple of families had a vision of joining their lives together and living their lives together with you at the center. They didn't have much, but God, they took what you gave them. They invested in the future of a church that would become this church. And God, you have blessed in so many ways through all these years. We give thanks to you this morning for all of the many worship services that have taken place here, both here and in the old building across the breezeway. Each and every song sung, hymn, praise song, the organ, the piano, the choir, the drums, guitars and singers and just every service, every time of worship, God, we give thanks. We don't give, we don't take it for granted. I thank you for all the baby dedications that have happened in this place. All the parents who made a commitment to you for their most precious gifts. Father, we thank you for the times we were able to celebrate the Lord's Supper all the special moments as families gathered together and praying and seeking and being thankful to you. God, the weddings where new families were formed. God, the funerals where hard goodbyes were said. God, we thank you for all of the many amazing community Christmas Eve services. Those most special times and especially the moments when we lit our candles and it spread throughout this room and it reminded us of the world. And the light that you brought. Father, for all of the vacation Bible schools and all of the children who came to know you as Savior during those times, but also who came to be introduced to you for the first time in their lives. 
Thank you for all the volunteers that made those things possible. We give thanks for the Bible studies that have taken place through all these years, different ways of studying your word, but the same word every single time. Sunday school classes, community groups. God, we thank you for the fellowship meals that we've enjoyed together inside our fellowship hall, outside on the lawn, over at the school, wherever it may be, when we gather together, we were the church. And we so enjoyed being together. God, we thank you for the church work days. We even thank you for the business meetings. God, we thank you and give thanks for all the pastors and the ministry staff members and the deacons and the Sunday school teachers through all of these nearly 100 years who have ministered in this place. God, we give thanks for every single person who has come to know you. And because they've come to know you, we will spend eternity with them in heaven someday. Thank you, God, for that. Most of all, we give thanks for the people. Because this church is not carpet, it's not plaster, it's not brick, it's not metal. It can't be painted. It's the people, it's your people, it's your body. And we give thanks that over all these years, we've had the opportunity to be your body here in this place. At this location. We do not take it for granted, Father. in Jesus name we pray Amen Will you stand with us I love you Lord Oh your mercy never fails All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. And I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after 
Not only should there be a, a tremendous sense, I think, of thanksgiving in this place today, I believe it's also important for us to recognize the importance of what will take place here in the future. As I mentioned, the Church of Christ of Oakdale has purchased this campus. They'll soon be worshiping here themselves. And I believe that as a church, we should be incredibly excited about that. Amen? I believe we should be celebrating the future that God has for them here. And I believe that we should ask God to bless that future. So we invited a couple from that church. Larry and Jeanette Zeller are here this morning. Original members of the Church of Christ at Oakdale. Leaders in this church. And they come here not only to worship with us today, but to stand in as representatives of that body of believers and allow us to pray over them as we ask God to bless all that he's going to continue to do in this place. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Let me ask the Zellers if you guys will come. And I'm going to ask our deacons and our ordained men, if you guys will come at this time as well and come and stand with us. Jeanette and Larry, thank you guys for being with us this morning. Our deacons are going to come. I want you guys to come and gather around them. And we're going to take just a moment right now and I'm going to invite our deacons to pray over them and then I'm going to ask Brian Williams. He's going to come. And he's going to voice a prayer of blessing. Where's Brian at? Come on up, Brian. Come on up here. Get him that microphone right there. All right. You guys give us just a moment. And as you pray, uh, deacons, let's, let's pray for this, this family as representatives of the Church of Christ. Let me start as Heavenly Father. I thank you, God. Loving God, we just come to you this morning, God, just again, so thankful for what you've given us as a church, God. We thank you for the past, for the present, for this, dear Lord, for this very moment right now, God, we, uh, we thank you for that. Uh, God, I pray for the future. I pray for the church of Christ, God. I pray that they will be blessed with as many blessings, if not more, than what we've been given here, God. And God, we know that we talk about buildings and bricks and mortar, as Ernest Justin said, but where, where two or three gather, that you're there also, God. And I just pray that they will experience that as well. And dear Lord, I don't, I just can't help but think it's an accident, the way that everything's happened with architect plans and PUDs and neighborhood meetings. And, and God, all we've been through, you had a plan, God. And, and it didn't work out by accident that they're purchasing this building that we're moving God. It was all, it was all in your plan. It may have taken a while for us to figure that out. But I just, I just pray that you will continue to be with that partnership, God, and that we will witness in this community, at the school, with our neighbors, and we just continue to spread your word as you've ordered us to do. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've given us, God. Most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus, God. I ask things in his name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing this song again as our benediction. Sing the chorus again. I will 
will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing that bridge. Your goodness is right.